it's going to be better for you. But when you got really down to the details and it really came time for things like commitment and dedication, when it came really time for someone to be there for you, when you needed something, let's say, they wouldn't be there for you. It didn't turn out as good as it originally sounded. How many of you have gotten yourselves in a situation and you thought, how in the world am I going to get out of this? Right? Amen. We've all done it. Amen. We've all made those mistakes. We've all made those poor decisions. And regardless of how or why, we ended up needing help. We were in what we call a pickle. Amen? And sometimes when you find yourself in that, right away I think our tendency is for us to want others to understand our predicament and our situation. They want, we want for them to understand where we're at and we want for them to help us, but help doesn't come. Amen? And so we turn to the Lord. And yes, the Lord helps us. Yes, the Lord blesses us. But what is the Lord going to teach you through that? Because the uh, deliverance might not come right away. Are you with me? It may not happen right away. It may not happen... Uh, in, on your timetable. It's going to happen on the Lord's timetable. And so what is the Lord trying to show you? The Lord is trying to show you get yourself out. Are you with me this morning, church? Sometimes you got to get yourself out. Sometimes, glory be to God, and the Lord is with you in this. You have just got to figure out a way to get yourself out. Because how does the world work? Well, I'll tell you how the world works. If somebody is going to help you, that's going to come with a condition. Right? In other words, you're going to owe them. Right? So you don't want to have to owe anybody. You want to be what? You want to be free. Amen. Amen. You don't want to be under the bondage of anybody in the world. Uh, so you got to sometimes, church, you just got to kind of buck up. You got to kind of just tighten up. You got to kind of strengthen yourself. You got to get your mind right. Amen. Sometimes you got to dig deep inside of you to a place you've never been before to get yourself out. Are you with me this morning? Is it making sense? Is it hitting home? You see, we see in this scripture, this is the first place where we meet Abraham. And uh, the first words to Abraham were, get thee out of thy country. God says, you better get yourself away from that situation you got yourself in. Because number one, he lied, didn't he? He lied about who his wife was. Alright? All in order to protect himself. Well, that would have been your first sign to begin with. If you have to lie about something to get somewhere, to get that job, to get that home, to get whatever it is you're trying to get or achieve whatever you're trying to achieve, then right away that should tell you this is wrong for my life. Now, you might not see the trouble it's going to cause right then, but trouble will come down the road. It'll show up. It will rear its ugly head. And so, you know, right away, Abraham should have said, well, if I've got to lie about this thing, then, then the best bet for me is to not even go to Egypt, right? That would have been the best choice, wouldn't it? 
That would have been the best decision and he could have helped himself and averted all of this trouble. You see, God's words are, are going to oftentimes, yes, be compassionate, and, but God wants to invite us and God wants to elevate us by separating us from the world that's out there. Yes, we can be in the world, but we don't have to be of the world, as Jesus said. So God is going to elevate you, and God will elevate you, okay, by separating you. He is going to separate us from useless idolatry. And when He separates you from useless idolatry, then you can move into meaningful worship. Amen? We need to be more free to worship. Alright? And a lot of times I think folks don't really worship because they are hindered uh, by certain things in their lives. And so they don't really worship because they don't really feel free to worship. It is God's will for you to feel free to worship. God wants you to be free. And God has provided every necessary means for you to be free. Amen? You see, sometimes we find ourselves in a burdensome obligation. Amen? Sometimes we find ourselves and we commit ourselves to a person or to a place or to a certain situation that may not be God's will for our lives. If we would seek the Lord... If sometimes we would just wait on the Lord. If we would wait on what the Lord is trying to tell us. If we would wait on what God is trying to say. Right then he's telling you, wait. Hey, amen. He's trying to get your attention. Amen. Sometimes you got to wait on Him. you got to wait on an answer from Him. Sometimes, well, we're just, we're just too, boy, i got to have it right now. We're, we have too much of a microwave society where we want what we want and we want it right now. And oftentimes it gets us in a pickle, doesn't it? And you got to get yourself out. you got to get out. Amen? And so what's going on? What's going on with Abraham? Why do we find him on his way to Egypt? Well, sometimes our lives, we find ourselves getting detoured. Amen? You know, you're traveling down the road and, and you're cruising along really good and, and the traffic up ahead, all of a sudden you see brake lights. You know something is going on, right? And... Traffic comes to a halt. You're just real poking down the road. You don't really know what's going on until you finally get up there and you see that sign that says what? Detour. Detour. Which means i got to go another way. And when you go another way, you're not familiar with that way. Right? You're not familiar with the surroundings. You're not familiar with what's around. You're not familiar with what's close. You're not... You know, you don't feel as safe, in other words, as you normally would. Egypt represents worldliness and it represents godlessness. Okay? That's what Egypt represents here. And this was where the friend of God was on his way to dwell. He had chosen to go to Egypt, the place that was less godly than any other place. Why? He got detoured. And so it is important to remember that most people, amen, descend to Egypt in stages. Most of the times, the mistakes that we make will happen in stages. We don't, we don't you know, just jump right through all these different things into just one big mistake. It happens in stages. First, uh, we compromise. How do we compromise? Well, we might compromise our faith. Abraham compromised, didn't he, by telling a lie about who Sarah was. You know, he said, uh, you tell them that you're my sister. That way they will favor me. 
You know, right away he's being favored by a godless people, right? Which is going to bring a hitch to it. That's going to bring a hook to it, okay? And also, it's causing trouble, and, it, and how would it not? I mean, I can't imagine me trying to tell Tracy, look, we're going to be, we're going to be heading to, to the big city. We're heading to L.A. because we're going, to, we're going to make it big. We're going to hit it big. But when we get there, look, dear, you got to tell them you're my sister, Okay. And, and this, this, this guy, this, uh, this big businessman may want to take you as his wife. I can imagine that. Can you imagine how that would go, right? They compromised not only Abraham, but Sarah. Because she went along with it. Both of them. I mean, making horrible decisions. Church, sometimes we just got to get with God and say, God, I need to know, is this right for me or is this wrong for me? God, I need to know, and I need to know I'm heading in the right direction. Lord, I got some decisions to make, and I need your help. Amen? Sometimes we just need to get with God first and give God time to get with us. To speak to us. Now, you might find the answer in the Bible. God could clearly give you an answer from the Bible that it'll, it'll just come out to you and you'll know what God is trying to say to you. God may speak to you with His still, small, silent voice. He may just speak to you internally. You, you, you can hear from the Lord. God may speak to you through godly advisors and godly counselors. You know, So there are a lot of ways to help you to make those right decisions. But don't compromise. Amen? You know, people are compromised on wanting to get something by fudging on their tithing. They'll say, well... We really don't have the money, but if we just start tithing half of what we normally tithe, well then uh, we can afford to do that. We can afford to get this, and we can afford to get that. Next thing you know, they can't pay their bills. They're stressed out to no end. They don't know how they're going to make it from week to week and month to month. And it all started when they compromised and they stopped tithing the way they're supposed to tithe. I've tithed ever since I've become a Christian church and I have never struggled not once to pay my bills. And that's an honest testimony. I mean that. And I don't know how God does it, but God does it. And you just trust God to do it. Just trust God to do it and be free with your tithe and say, God, here it is. Amen? And then the next week, do the same thing. The next week, do the same thing. And God will work it out. I don't know how He does it. But church, He does it. He, he does. He does it. So just trust Him with that. Don't compromise on that. Now, are all roads uh, that, that, that lead to Egypt, you know, the wrong roads? Well... Sometimes life's lessons are the best lessons. We learn from our mistakes, right? You may begin down that road and then realize, hey, this is the wrong road for me to be on because this is the one good thing that I love about the Lord. God always allows U-turns. If you do get started down that wrong road, uh, and bless God, hopefully you realize it, then stop, do a U-turn, and turn back around and head back the other way. Hightail it out of that destination spot because it won't going to be nothing but trouble to begin with. Amen? God allows U-turns. I can't stand it when I get somewhere, especially uh, places that have one-way streets. Drives me absolutely crazy when I miss a, a area I'm supposed to go to and I think, well, if I just do a, a U-turn, 
Well, wait a minute, I can't do a U-turn. Then you get somewhere and you say, well, I can do a U-turn here. And they say, no U-turns allowed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God allows U-turns. Aren't you glad? Amen. Thank God He allows U-turns. And I, I give Him glory for that. Now, sometimes we live on the border, amen, of Egypt for so long. And we're seeing that place. We're hearing what they do. We're hearing the sounds of the world. We're drawn into it. Amen. Uh, good chance you living in the wrong place. Amen. Atmosphere means everything. Where you're at, who you're with. Sometimes church, you got to change people. Sometimes you got to change places. Sometimes you got to change things. Sometimes you got to change who you're hanging around. Amen? They may not be good for you. They may not be a good example for you. Amen? They may not really represent uh, Jesus the way that we want to represent Jesus. And you might think, well, if I stay around them, then, then, then I'm going to rub off on them. And they're going to they're gonna want some of my Jesus. No, they're going to take and take and take and take. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Sometimes you just can't reach everybody. And you got to know when. Amen? you got to listen to the Lord, church. God wants to save you. God wants to help you. God wants to protect you. God wants to watch over you. But if you just do whatever you want to do, then you're going to find yourself in a pickle. And you're going to have to get yourself out. Amen? So don't, don't let yourself get detoured. Sometimes we are depleted. Sometimes we are the Christian that we try to do everything. We think that the more I do for the Lord, the more I do for the Lord, the more I do for the Lord. Glory to God, I'm serving the Lord. Glory to God, I got to do this. Oh, they need me to do that. And you do this and you do that and you do this and you do that. And the next thing you know, you are depleted. Because somebody else has taken and taken and taken and taken and taken from you. How many times have you heard me say it, church? If you're in a crowd of people and somebody's willing to do everything, there's always going to be somebody willing to let them. Amen. Right? Don't let yourself get depleted. you got to take care of yourself. It's all about balance. Amen? You know, you got work, you got family, you got church, and yes, you got recreation. You, you need some recreation. You need some me time, right? There's nothing wrong with that, you know? In a, in a marriage, um, I've, I've, I've always found it extremely difficult in counseling when uh, uh, the man will come to me and say, Pastor, I, I just I don't know what to do. You know, I want to go fishing, and, and doggone, she wants to go fishing with me. I want to go golfing. She wants to go golfing with me. I want to do this. He said, and I love her. I love her to death, but I can't do everything with her. And you can't. That's right. You know, you can't do everything with them because you'll drive each other crazy. You know? You'll be, you'll be doing the, the neck slam on somebody. Right? I mean, don't let yourself get depleted. You know? You know, I'll, I'll find myself going out the door, you know, I'm going to do something. And, Tracy will say, well, have a good time. And I'll say, I am. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to just, you got to look out for yourself. You got to have that time though, y'all. I'm serious. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's important. Now, you don't want that to get to be too much, right? Sometimes, you can have too much of a good thing, right? And it causes problems. So it's all about the balance. But don't, 
don't let yourself be depleted by, by doing too much or doing too much of one thing. You know, you hear about workaholics, right? That's all they do is work, 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 work. And they work so much, that's all that they do. You know, you try to take a trip and go do something with a workaholic. And they, they don't know what to do, you know. You'll be taking a, a bus tour somewhere. They'll be cleaning the bus. You know. It's like, relax, bro. Just take it easy. You know. Good gracious, man. We're on a trip. You know. You ain't got to work. You know. So, it's all about balance. Don't, don't let yourself get too, uh, too much. A trip to Egypt really cost Abraham his integrity. And sometimes our integrity is all that we're going to have. Amen? you got to protect your integrity. Abram claimed that Sarah was his sister. And, and uh, you know, we might call that a white lie, but it's not. That's a lie. Amen? Uh, half of a truth is a, is a whole lie in the eyes of the Lord. And if we find ourselves in Egypt, we become prone to lie especially to ourselves. Amen. And the spirit of Egypt will cloud the truth. Uh, a trip to Egypt cost Abraham his testimony. It really did. It cost him his testimony about uh, the goodness of the Lord and what the Lord had done in his, in his life. And Pharaoh asked him, you know, even a man of the world asked him, what have you done to me? Well, what have you done to me, so-called man of God? What have you done to me? Why would you do this? You see what I mean? Um, you know, even the world recognizes that as, a, as some things are just too much. That's a, that's a bad thing, right? Uh, you know, and so he had to get out. He had to leave. And it was the very same question that God had asked Eve. Amen? And it was the very same one as, as Cain. What, what have you done? What have you done? You see, Pharaoh was revealing the genuine intentions of Abram's heart. Abram knew. We now call him Abraham. He knew that if he convinced Pharaoh and his officers uh, that Sarah was his sister... He knew that he would find favor. And he did find favor. I mean, what did the Bible say? He had goats and he had sheep and he had donkeys. He had camels. I'm sure he had territory. You know, he was getting all kinds of stuff for this lie. But it always comes out, don't it, church? It always comes out. So make sure that you stay true to God. Always be true to God. You see, Pharaoh knew he was a godless man. Amen? But God used him to show Abraham that you've got to watch what you're doing. You've got to watch where you're going. Amen? Sometimes we need to be disciplined. And the Lord will discipline us. Abraham and Sarah found themselves in a situation that was as frightening as the famine they were trying to escape. Yes, they were trying to escape a famine. They went to Egypt. But were there other options? Well, they don't know. Because they never inquired of the Lord about it, did they? They never asked the Lord. They were along with people that they didn't know. You know, that's difficult enough, right? But God used Pharaoh's house as a place of discipline to Abraham. Now, when Abraham was on his way, I want you to think about this, and I'm going to finish up here in just a second. But when they were on their way to Egypt, Abraham resolved within himself to say, if they find out she is my wife, then they are going to kill me and they're going to take her, right? So that was a bad thing. And it, and it is. That's a bad thing. But it wasn't worth lying over. He should have just said, this just isn't the place for us. If we got to do all that, this just is not 
the place for us. But think about this as well. Once it was all discovered, once it all came out, Weren't there, wasn't there just as much a threat of Pharaoh now killing both of them? Can you imagine how they felt those days and hours leading up to them actually leaving Egypt? Do you, do you, th you think about the fear that must have gripped his heart? He probably thought at any moment, Pharaoh could decide, you know what, that what he done was wrong and he needs to pay for it and kill him. So, either way, right, he was in a bad situation. Why? Because he was in the wrong place to start with. You put yourself in the wrong place to start with, church. There's never going to be a good outcome. The only outcome is to leave. Get out of it. Get out of that situation. And so sometimes God will discipline us. You know, you'll find yourself alone with people you don't know. You'll find yourself in a situation where you, you may even face death. Amen? And it was also the public humiliation of it all. Amen? I mean, I'm sure during this time that they were there, they eventually got to know people, right? I mean, there were people giving them sheep and, and, and cattle and camels and, and, you know, giving them all of these things. They got to know some folks. Now all this comes out. Public humiliation. You know? It's just like, Finding out, you know, something horrible that somebody does. They face that public humiliation. You don't want to do that. Nobody wants to go through that. So what's the best plan? The best plan is don't put yourself in that situation to begin with. Amen? You know, I've, I've seen people marry the wrong person. All right? And I don't care how much talking to them you do, all right? And, I, and this happened years ago uh, on one particular situation. It didn't matter what you said to that person. They had their mindset, boy, they were going to get married. And I knew it was wrong. Others knew it was wrong. But you could not tell them, Right? And then when it all went to heck in a hand cart, lo and behold, they come back to me and they say, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know, you just, you want to do that choke slam again. Just, I'm going to choke slam you. You know. Don't be stubborn. Right? Be open to what others try to speak into your life. Think about whether or not it is of the Lord. If it's of the Lord and you can determine that, then it will be good. It will always be good. Anything that is of the Lord, remember this, will always be good for you. Right? It might not be what you want. But it will always be good for you. It will always be the best for you. Amen? Now, for Abraham to return to the original purpose of God, he had to listen to what the Lord said, and that was, go thy way. In other words, get out of that situation. Get yourself out of that situation. Amen? God allows you turns. Aren't you glad? And God will allow you a U-turn. And sometimes we just need a U-turn. You know, men are the worst about directions, right, ladies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got too many agreements on that. But you know, sometimes we'll be we'll be heading down the road, and we just we just know. It's, yeah, I, I just know if I can get down here, and I can feel. I think north, north yet yeah, north is that way. We're heading south, honey. I'm telling you. If we can get out here and take a left, we'll have it, you know. 
And you just keep going, you keep going, you keep going, you will not turn around. You know, and you will not ask anybody anything. And it never works, does it? 